I'm Trace. And I'm Sam. And we just can't wait to be king. And this is From Our Perspective. It's the 78th episode of From Our Perspective, by the way. Thank you all for joining us, of course. Thank you. As always. Thank you. We love <laughs> social distance kissing. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't really have much... <laughs> God, if you listen to each podcast, it's like, yeah, well, I've I've been home a lot. Um, let's hope this clears up soon, and then eventually there gets to a point where we're like, well, nothing much has changed. Everything is still shitty. Uh, um, well, I do have some things. I, I just guess don't have let's much. jump right into it. That's what we always say. <laughs> yeah. What do you have though? I guess. Okay, what do you okay. got? First I, of all. I, I want to bring something the, up. This this weekend. Is your birthday. It's my birthday weekend. Happy birthday, Happy, Trace. Thank you, Sam. Happy birthday to me. I turned 20, the big two zero. Yeah. Um, one of the most least important birthdays when compared to other ones. Uh, I guess that's true. That's a nice pessimistic way to look at it. Well, it's just another year, you know? Yeah, you know, just another year. I don't feel older i feel the same feel is it weird that you turn 20 in 2020 it's easy it would be a lot easier if i turned if i if my birthday was on january 1st yeah so that like when the clock strikes 12 on new year's eve i'm just like and now i'm now i'm another year older same as is our calendar yeah and then you sing that that song Old Lang Syne. Another Lang. year older. Oh, I thought you were New saying New one just begun. That one. I, I was... I thought you were talking about Old Lang Syne because that's like the one that people sing on the Yeah, years. but Another Year Older is what you said. What if I started singing Wonderwall instead? I think that'd be good. <laughs> or Closing Time. Closing Time! <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, so no, it's it's definitely easy. It's always easy because like, let's just say when I'm like looking up a celebrity, and I'm like, how old are they? And it doesn't say like they're 76 or whatever. It like the fact that they're born in like an odd year or not an odd year, but just like a non divisible by five year makes it a lot harder for me to calculate their age. Yeah, because I don't I go mean, immediately to my calculator like a normal person would. You I try go, to do it in your head. <laughs> I go, okay, they were born in 1976, so they would have been four in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go 10, 20, 30. <laughs> and they would have been 20 in 2000. It's 2020. Okay, they're 44. Um, so that that's typical. But with someone like me, you say, is it before September? Okay, he's 19. Is it after September? He's 20. It's easy. It's easy as pie. Um, yeah. And it's nice. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I, that was one thing I wanted to bring up. The other thing is kind of a blunder that I had that really just messed with my day. Uh, yeah. What, what is that? That sounds fun. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. So um, <laughs> I've just been drinking a lot more water recently. Mm-hmm. Um, trying you to think you're better than s- me, don't you? Yeah, I do. No, I'm just trying to cut back on sodas. They're, you know... They're horrible for you. As, I mean, I don't, like, go for the sugary ones. It's just, you know, water's healthy. and Yeah, yeah, of course. Helps you, of course. Helps you live longer, and that's, that's the right. kind of thing that I look for. Um, so... To stave but, off the specter of death one more, one more year. <laughs> one more trip around the sun. Um, <laughs> I drink one water. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you turn to death and you say, "What do you think about that?" <laughs> Throw the empty water bottle at his head. Death, like I see the Grim Reaper open the door and I go, "Ah, ah, ah!" <laughs> I quickly chug a glass of water and he goes, "Damn it!" Next he year, goes, he goes. He holds up his hands and he closes the door. <laughs> a thousand years later, I'm a thousand years old. I'm, I'm like, let me, let me get my water. <laughs> If it was that easy. Um, but because plain water gets a little boring, what I do is just to give it a little bit of zest, a little bit of flavor. You pee in it. <laughs> Piss in it, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, 
Well, from what I've learned about survival, I probably could with how hydrated I've been recently. But I'm not going to because that's nasty. Trace, that's gross. That is gross. I just said it. It's gross. Trace, that's gross. You you drink <laughs> you, your own pee? <laughs> you piss boy. Piss boy. Piss, piss boy. boy. Piss boy. Ha huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, I squirt like... <laughs> <laughs> you squirt some of your pee in there, piss boy. <laughs> And that's been from our perspective. No! <laughs> what do you actually put in there, other than your piss? <laughs> I, put, I, I squirt some lemon juice into it. That looks uh, like piss. <laughs> it does kind of look like piss. Um, but it just gives it a little bit of a citrusy zing. Not enough. I don't put enough to make, like, lemonade. It's literally just to give it some flavor. So it's, like, really diluted lemonade. Yeah. Um... Which isn't the best, but it's definitely better than just like, because like, you know, you got to be in the mood for a nice cup of water. But when I'm not, I want something that really plays to my taste buds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to just make lemonade. I'd rather, regardless, this has nothing to do with, I mean, it has a little to do with the story, but let me not get, (laughs) yeah. So, uh, recently... And when I say recently, I mean today. My mom also got uh, lime juice. Okay. Now, you're, now you're seeing yourself, Trace. Lemon lime, that's a Sprite right there. Yeah, you got yourself a Sprite. It doesn't taste like Sprite. It's, it's just really, it tastes like sour water. But I wanted to see if the lime juice had a distinct smell. So the thing is, is you, it's like a little bottle. It's kind of shaped like a lime, and you got to poke a hole in the top. I was like, I was like sniffing, and I was like, I can't sniff it. You know, when you have like a bottle of soap or something, you kind of like squirt it a little you kinda, bit. You make it like wheeze a little. Like yeah, was, to get the air out. So you squirted lime juice up your nose. I squirted lime juice, and and let me tell you, this thing was so full that it did not. It was like the moment I applied any pressure. A stream of lime juice went straight up into my <laughs> nose. And I'll tell you, it wasn't pleasant. It didn't... I thought it was... Like, I started to panic because I thought it was going to burn. Like, I thought it was yeah. like... Uh, uh, it's going to start burning me. It's it's like acidic. <laughs> it's, it's acid. <laughs> it's acid. I, got just, I just got xenomorph blood in my nose. Um... But it definitely wasn't pleasant. Like, it, it, it didn't, like, my nose didn't melt off. I, I'm yeah. still a... Uh, a nosed I'm, man. <laughs> I'm still a man with a nose, a nosed man. But I am... Uh, it, 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 it wasn't a pleasant experience still. That reminds me of a story. Mm-hmm. Um, my, me and my family were at Olive Garden. Yeah. My dad he was squirted eating. lime juice up your nose? <laughs> yeah, he, he strapped me to the table and did that. <laughs> um, no, my dad was eating a salad. Yeah. And he goes to cut a pepper. And I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, lo- no. I'm looking at him. Oh, no. And as he cuts it, I watch as a, a stream <laughs> of liquid flies directly into his open eye. He goes, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Stands up and <laughs> runs to the bathroom. <laughs> That's, uh, I hate that for Terry, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> we were all like, what is happening? No, that shit, like, I would imagine it was a banana pepper. It was. That shit hurts yeah. when it gets into it. That's like, he basically tear gassed himself. <laughs> yeah. It was so crazy, though. Uh, that's pretty funny. That, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm glad it didn't get into my eye, because I feel like that would definitely burn. Mm-hmm. Like the nose, it was just basically touching a more sensitive skin. Yeah, but it 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 like tickled. Well, it's more it's never anything. good to get any sort of liquid up your nose. Like if you well, get splashed yeah. water up. The biggest thing was is I panicked, and I but <laughs> drops the, it, screams. <laughs> <laughs> we have a panic room in my basement that I ran into and and curled up. No, um, but I like. <laughs> Now whenever you like, see a lime, you cry. I, I scream and cry. No, I grabbed a towel and just like made sure that it wasn't like dripping out of my nose. Because like I said, 
It, it was took no pressure at all. It was a live bomb. <laughs> and it just <laughs> right into my nose. Um, but I, I got the towel and I like made sure it wasn't dripping. I kind of wiped my nose. And I said, this will be a good story for the podcast. <laughs> I like how I'm starting to think like that now. This is, a, this is a notable event in my life. This is notable, and I can talk about it. Um, and we did. And, and we did. Are. And here we are. It's the beginning of the regular show. That's right. Not, not the Cartoon Network program, but the show that is typically... Ha- okay, let's hop into it. Yeah, let's <laughs> hop into it. What are we talking about? Uh, today... Thanks to dear friend of the show, former guest and friend of ours, not former friend of ours, he's still a friend <laughs> of ours, uh, former guest and still friend of ours, still Noah, Mello. Of ours. Noah Mello. Uh, I just Noah was, Mello. Noah Mello. I was talking he, a little. Uh, he was on a, pa- I can't remember which episode He was on the was. movie one. Movie, like yeah. Movie well, I don't know the episode number. Uh, but yeah, we talked about movies with him. Uh, he suggested... That we talk about mythology. Uh, and it can't be from our perspective if we don't put the word weird, strange, or crazy in front of <laughs> in front of the topic. Uh, We're, uh, <laughs> you won't believe number seven. You won't believe number seven. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about mythology. Now, I've come prepared with uh, Chinese and Greek mythology. Uh, I'm going to kind of keep Greek to the back in case we need it. Because we've all heard a lot about Greek mythology. You know, yeah. you hear about the Minotaur and and Zeus and Hercules and stuff like that. And that's old news. Yeah, everybody heard about that. So I've got Chinese and Greek. Sam, you're bringing two different mythologies to the table. Yeah, I've got Egyptian and Norse mythology. Very original. And if this is... If, if you all want, after this episode... If you want us to bring a new uh, episode of mythology, we can. Just give us a new, like, give us some other ideas. Or if you just say, "Hey, make another mythology episode," we'll figure out the other con- or the other mythologies to talk yeah, about. We'll, we'll hit like Mayan. We'll hit Japanese. Yeah, stuff Indian, like that. Indian. Um, things but like these, that. Yeah, these are the, just the four. Yeah, these are just the four we picked to, for this episode. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into it. Uh, who wants to go first, me or you? Um, I guess I'll go. Okay. Um, my first one. Yeah. Is Egyptian. Okay. Let me scroll up to it. I was at the bottom and it's at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so Isis, which is a, a god. Which is a god, not... The terrorist organization. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and get uh, that out of the way. Had intimate relations with her late brother. Nasty. Yeah, Wait, how about that? Like he was already dead? Well, do you want me to read? Yes. Um, well, Maybe Cyrus not. and Isis were brother and sister. <laughs> okay. But, but also husband and wife. It was okay back then. It was different times. They ruled Egypt together until... Their brother. <laughs> Fuck. So a third brother. Set. Another god. Slayed Osiris. And took his place. Poor fellow. Isis refused to believe her husband was gone. Searching all of Egypt for his body. After finding Osiris, Isis resurrected him so they could be intimate and conceive a child. And the baby had like a third arm coming out of its chest. <laughs> its eye, one eye was a lot lower on its face than the other eye. It's nasty. <laughs> yeah, people so- back then think that that kind of stuff was like okay. Like, what about that is like. I mean, hey. I'm not judging. <laughs> you should. <laughs> That's how you get I like the judging. Habsburg lip and the Habsburg chin, <laughs> where they all look like. Like they, like they've been stretched out and smushed. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, it's kind of nasty. Okay, I guess I'll hop in. Yeah, because I don't really have from, anything else to say. Other let's than move on from incest. Yeah, then that's nasty. And let's talk about more incest. No, I don't. Great, know. great no, news. If it was Greek, if we were on Greek first, we would definitely be talking about more incest. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I just kind of uh, skimmed through so I could be surprised by this by this Chinese mythology. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, I'm, of course, on ancienthistorylists.com, uh, which has a bunch of tabs for other mythologies. So that's pretty cool. We'll view this website again someday, hopefully. Um, the first one is uh, the pilgrimage mythology in Chinese mythology. Uh, the pilgrimage mythology primarily talks about Quan Yin, the goddess of mercy and compassion. In most of the myths, she is portrayed as a woman holding an infant dressed in white and sitting on a lotus. She was said to have been murdered by her own father. She arrived in hell reciting holy books, and the king of hell was very angry with her. Hey, you missy, don't you be doing that down was here. Was she still holding the kid on a lotus? On a lotus flower, holding a baby, <laughs> reciting. This is like the craziest character <laughs> it's it's pretty great. Actually. Her eyes are rolled back in her head as she recites holy holy texts. Um, Second question. Yeah. Is it a big lotus flower or is she very small? Uh, this picture of her is only showing from the shoulders up, so I can't really. Uh, I could look it up real quick. Quan Yin. I would imagine it's a big lotus flower. I would imagine it's mythology, so I would imagine so. Um, well, it's not showing me any lotus flowers. It's just showing me... Okay, here's the lotus. It looks like a big lotus flower. Okay. Well, that's great. That's cool. That's it's rad. Like a, it's like a hovercraft. <laughs> she floats around on it. Yeah. Um, he sent her back, the king of hell, of course, is, is the he. He sent her back to the world of the living, where she gained spiritual insights from Buddha, and later on was blessed with immortality. The temple of Quan Yin, located at the summit of the Wondrous Peak, has always attracted many pilgrims. The pilgrimage mythology also talks about how Buddhism was introduced and flourished in China. The, myth, the mythology... I didn't know, hold on. I didn't yeah. know the pilgrims went to China. Yeah, there was uh, I thought they second, went to Plymouth Rock. Well, they, well, there was pilgrimage rock. And they said, pilgrimage? Pilgrim. I think we belong here. Big hat? Buckles? <laughs> Buckles on hat? Buckle <laughs> on shoe? I think Buckle? this is the place to be. And we you know, you know ancient flowers. ancient China had a lot of buckled hat people, yeah. buckled shoed people, witch burnings, stuff like that. Yeah, um, definitely. Where was I? Where was I? Where, the mythology has it that the monkey... Can, oh, wait... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's where you were. <laughs> <laughs> the pilgrimage mythology also talks about how Buddhism was introduced. I was there, introduced and flourished in China. The mythology has it that the monkey king converted to Buddhism, but continued Taoist knowledge and skills to combat evil. The monkey king's the next one, so I guess I guess they're doing kind of a. <laughs> This one is cooler than the pilgrimage, so we'll put that above it, but we'll also reference it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's the pilgrimage. She's like a badass lady, I guess. Yeah. She, she, she holy ghosted the, the devil until he said, <laughs> I've had enough with you. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> okay, what's your next one? Um, I'm hopping over to Norse. Okay. Um, so this one, the, the little headline is, Thor is a blushing bride. And Loki is his bridesmaid. This is this is Marvel Cinematic Universe fan fiction, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. Uh, for anyone who thinks the cross dressing in a uh, is a new phenomenon, think again. It once happened uh, that a giant by the name of Thirum stole Thor's hammer and refused to give it back. He would only return the hammer under one condition. That he be allowed to marry Freya. Of course, no one was going to let that happen, especially Thor. So he decided to impersonate Freya and go to marry the giant in her place. Loki loved the idea and transformed himself into a handmaid in order to go and watch all the happenings. Somehow the giant bought the disguise and the two managed to get Thor to the wedding feast. 
Through the whole feast, Thor was pretty obviously manly, especially in appetite, and the giant seemed suspect of something. Uh, Loki continually made excuses, all with underlying jokes, about Thor's actual sex. The moment Thor could, he (laughs) could get his hands on the hammer. He not only left the giant at the altar, he killed his would-be husband and all the guests in the attendance. Oh my god. Probably to the great amusement of Loki. That's a Jesus. great story. That is a great story. I like that. What? A, that sounds like a slapstick episode of a, a sitcom without the murder. That's probably going to... You know the Disney Plus Loki TV show? That's going to be the first episode. That's the pilot. Yeah. They're going to steal Thor's hammer. Thor kills everyone. <laughs> Murders indiscriminately. Yeah. That's pretty good. I do like that a lot. Uh, I want to follow suit and hop over to my next mythology. Uh, Greek mythology. Well, you can't leave us hanging on the Monkey King. We can get to it. Or do you want me to stay with no, the Monkey fine. King? No, you got to come back to him eventually, though. No, he'll be next. He'll be next. Okay, he'll be next. okay. Okay. Uh, I'm hopping over to Greek mythology. Uh, mine is Leda or Leda. Gets down and dirty with a swan. Oh, God. <laughs> you gotta love the Greeks and their crazy imagination, don't you? <laughs> I feel like they were uh, early furries. Do you think that a lady fucked a swan? And I'm sorry to the people who had to hear me say that. <laughs> and then said... It was Zeus. <laughs> she tried she to defend it. Oh, okay. Um. Okay, anyway, anyway. Throughout all of mythology, specifically Greek, it didn't specify, but I will, Zeus sleeps with basically everyone. Gods, demigods, mortals, animals, and even sometimes with mortals while disguised as animals. One of the strangest myths involving that is that of Leda and the Swan. In the story, Zeus sees Leda and admires her from afar. In order to get with her, he transforms into a swan and then seduces her. No, here's the thing. Yeah. That's that's crazy, what you just said there. That's insane. That's Why don't you just turn into, like, a dude? A handsome man. Not Zeus, but just another handsome man. Yeah, just... A, yeah. Why a swan? Because Sam... Sam. Have you ever been neck. driving... Have you ever been driving... <laughs> and you see a, a, a pond. Close your eyes. Go into your okay, mind I'm gonna, palace. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go... Go to your drift away. yeah. Go to your mind palace that you go to every night. Yes. You're driving. Yeah, I'm I'm in my car now. You're driving, okay. Mm-hmm. You're driving next to an abandoned Toys R Us. That's not important. Oh, is, I'm just this setting. This creepy. The, I'm just setting the scene. I can still hear the theme song. <laughs> about about you know. Fifteen seconds later, you see a pond. Oh, Jeffrey! No, <laughs> Jeffrey, don't attack me, Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey the giraffe does not is not there. No. Oh. <laughs> he disappears. Okay. Uh, oh. About fifteen seconds past this Toys R Us, you see a pond. Okay. And in that pond, you see something that makes you slam on the brakes of your car. Uh huh. It's a swan. Now you think to yourself. I'm going to fuck this. <laughs> I'm having trouble getting into the best <laughs> No, you're in your mind palace. I control, I like I control your I mind palace now. I, I feel like this is like some sort of... Um, this is like how cults work. <laughs> I control your mind palace. Okay. Um, that's it. You just want to fuck a swan now. I don't want that. <laughs> yes, you do. At least in your mind palace, you do. I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. I control your mind palace. <laughs> okay. Um. What did that have to do with anything? <laughs> the two mated, the swan <laughs> and the lady. And from this union came two sets of twins. One of these children, born from an egg, no less. Now, here's the thing. It's typically the female swan that lays the egg. Are you telling me that the female human laid an egg or the male swan that was actually a god laid an egg? No, the female human did. Pooped out an egg? I don't want to think about the logistics of that, but I think so. That, that 
that child's name was Helen. Yes, as in Helen of Troy, allegedly the most beautiful woman alive. The, mo- the mythology makes no note, however, if her mother ever told her that she was half Zeus Swan. I don't think I'd want to know if I was half Zeus Swan. I don't think I'd want to know that, no. Now imagine being told, like, imagine being told that you came from an egg. Like, egg baby, egg baby. <laughs> 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 okay, hold on. Yeah. Did she know it was Zeus in swan form? I think I've heard of this story before, and I think she did. And I think the reason that Zeus became a swan is because... What was she into that? No, what was Zeus's wife's name? Hera. Hera uh, was, like, watching him because he's a miscreant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... She's not looking for swans this time. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked as a swan. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> this. Just imagine. Okay. All right. I'm in my mind. <laughs> imagine, so my, imagine a swan walks up to a woman and says, hey, baby, how you doing? No, imagine you're, you're taking your walks that you're taking now, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, you, I'm going on walks now. And a swan starts to waddle up to you. And says... And it goes, hey, Trace. It, it wait, speaks wait, at all. Wait, should I be in my mind palace right now? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I'm in my mind palace. Close your eyes. All right. You're walking wherever you walk. I don't know where you walk. Sometimes. I walk sometimes some places. Yes. Okay. You're walking. Yes. And a swan waddles up to you. Okay. And it says, hey, Trace. Hello, Mr. Swan. You're looking really good, it <laughs> says. Oh, thank you. I've been walking more. Um, I'm Zeus. <laughs> Let's get dirty. <laughs> Hard cut. Me and the swan laying in bed. He's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Hard cut away all, from this. Your hair is all messed up. <laughs> yeah, hard cut away from this because this is a horrible thing to behold. Hey, you you did it to me earlier. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm tired of talking about people making love to swans. Okay. Well, I'll I'll pick it up. Yes, yes, yes. Thank With you. another Egyptian thing. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, this one is... The first Egyptian god vomited and spit up his children. Like a baby? He went... <laughs> Egyptian gods created other gods in an unusual way. According to Egyptian mythology, the first god rose out of the sea of water, a tomb. I could... And listen, pronunciations, they're going to be wrong. <laughs> Trust me. Trust and me. And also, we haven't done very much research. These could be wrong. These could... Wanna, this, this mythology could be false. We're definitely going to mess up names. Not the mythology. The information about the mythology. Well, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Okay. <laughs> Uh, especially when we get to the when we get back to the Chinese names, I'm gonna tell you that I'm just giving it my best shot. Yeah, we don't mean any offense to anyone. No, we're just we haven't done a lot of research. It's two a.m. <laughs> we're getting shit done though. Um, a tomb also known as Ra. Oh, was the a sun lonely god. god. Yes, was a lonely god without anyone else for company, but as the only god. Atum had limited options to create children. Bread with his shadow. <laughs> Go to your mind palace. Okay, I'm in my mind palace. <laughs> you see your shadow. I do. Okay. What do you feel? I feel intense feelings of fear for what you're going to make me do. <laughs> no. In your mind palace, you see your shadow and you feel horny. <laughs> And you say, I want baby. <laughs> I want baby god. <laughs> and then you throw up baby. Created Shu, god of air. Tefnut, goddess of moisture. <laughs> what the fuck is up with all these ancient civilizations and having a god for literally everything? I could bet you that there's... Hold on. That there's... I also have a problem where the first two that are made... Well, I guess it is from a desert civilization. I'm the god of sun. I'm the god of air. 
And then moisture. <laughs> I like it. I like it moist. <laughs> Definite comes out and he's like, moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> Damp. <laughs> oh no. Moist. And everyone shrills and goes, Ugh. but a tomb faced biological limitations in giving birth. He had to spit out shoe and vomit up Tefnut. Well, he spit like he was hawking a loogie. He's like, <laughs> and then the other yeah. one came out and he got kind of caught in the throat and he goes, Ugh. or did the second one have kind of a, like a nasty taste? Um, <laughs> regardless, I look think up if the second turned- God had, had a nasty taste. Regardless, everyone has turned the podcast off now because we so, we lip smacked into the mic and we made throw up noises. That's true. That's true. What they're not telling you is that Tefnut has a cat head, and Shu is apparently just a lady, a person. It's just a a person. The um, other one's a cat, a cat lady. I'd be a little weirded out if my sibling was half cat. <laughs> And your and your dad was your your dads were a bird headed man. And a shadow. And a shadow. <laughs> you go ask Ra. And you're, and you're like, the only three things in existence at the you, moment. Yeah, you go ask Ra and you're like, Hey, can me and Tefna Tefnut, yeah. Go hang out with uh nothing and he's like, Ask your father and you just look down at the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks I just don't I just don't get Because Greek mythology too I'm going back to my point real quick They just had a god for everything Like why I bet if you f- looked hard enough There would be a god in one of these Ancient civilizations for shit And piss Probably Like what's the point I I guess I guess in this m- in this typically monotheistic society that we live in today, it's so absurd to think about the fact of having a god for a door frame. <laughs> and then having 13 others for, like, the floor. It's just so... It's baffling. I mean, hey. I was, hey, to each their own. I don't think anyone believes in these, in these anymore. That's why we call them mythologies and not religion. I guess that's true. Um, but if you if you do, I don't mean any harm or Yeah, well, of course we we don't mean any It's um, just it's it's odd. It's odd to me. Yeah, and like you said from a from from a generally monotheistic um culture it it can seem were you a pr- little bit strange. Were you proud of me pulling out that big word? <laughs> I am. Typically, I can't speak on this podcast at all. <laughs> and I pulled out monotheistic out of my pocket. You're like, anyway, wham! Let's talk about the Monkey King, finally. Monkey King! Monkey King. Monkey King. Monkey King. Mm, monkey King. Monkey. monkey. <laughs> the Monkey Myth. Chinese mythology. Is this the, the Journey to the West? Monkey King? I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a, it's a very famous Chinese story. It could be. It could. It's probably the same Monkey King. So, beats me. Uh, a government official named Wu Ching Chingin. Again, mm-hmm. this is it. Okay. In his popular novel Journey to the Oh yeah Journey to the West, I should have read the first sentence. Uh, that would have been helpful. <laughs> in his popular novel Journey to the West, tells the myth about the Monkey King, Sun. Wu Kong. Sun Wu Kong. Uh, Sun Wu Kong is the most famous monkey in China. He is said to have been born out of a stone egg. Hell yeah! That came from a magic rock. Hold on. <laughs> on the mountain <laughs> of fruit and flowers. Hell yeah! According to mythology, Sun used to be very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> naughty monkey. And naughty, eager, naughty, naughty. And, naughty, 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 and eager to take over. To wait, to take, to over, take the, over all of China. Well, to take over the world. <laughs> and apparently, like brain from thinking the brain. <laughs> <laughs> take over the world. Snarf. <laughs> um. 
And it apparently took Buddha a lot of effort to tame him. Uh, <laughs> That's rough when the guy who isn't the, the Buddha has to be like, God, this is a lot of work to get you like... Literally the guy who, who found enlightenment first. Yeah. It's like, this is tough, buddy. This, this is rough, bud. Can you cool it? Bud, this fucking <laughs> sucks. Hey, look at me. <laughs> I'm the Buddha. Eyes over here. This sucks. This sucks, man. Calm down. You're not taking over the world. Um, the Monkey King is characterized by his greedy, but joyful, curious, and extremely popular nature. Later in his life, he became a loyal companion to the monk Zhuang Zhang on his adventurous journey from China to India and back again. The Monkey King. How about that? Poor Buddha. Am I right? Poor Buddha. Uh, But yeah, what's your next one? Uh, My next one, we're hopping back to Norse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dwarves make Thor's hammer because Loki's a jerk. (laughs) I mean, I think most Norse mythology stories could end with because Loki is a jerk. (laughs) Well, just because someone's a jerk. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the Thor that we know is is definitely not as nice as the Thor is Thor actually was. <laughs> yeah. Especially he was a when lot he more just angry. When he, yeah, when he just killed anyone for any reason he could. <laughs> now thanks to recent Marvel movies, we all know that Thor's hammer Mjolnir is pretty awesome. Sick. But how it was made is arguably even more awesome. You see Loki you see, Loki, ever the trickster, decided to cut off all of Sif's hair one night. Mm-hmm. I believe that's Thor's wife. Or okay. Like, yeah. It's someone else. Sif just happened to be Thor's bride-to-be, so Thor was less than happy, and threatened Loki within an inch of his life. Loki promised to have the dwarves make her some... Some amazing, beautiful hair as a replacement. I'm sorry, I thought I read that wrong. But no, he wants dwarves to make new hair. Okay. Um, and Thor begrudgingly agreed. The dwarves were up to the task, but Loki just didn't know when to stop pressing his luck. He went to another set of dwarves and bet that there was no way they could create anything as awesome as the, those other dwarves who made the hair. He even bet these dwarves his own head that they couldn't do it. Of course, the dwarves were not going to be shown up like that. And through great hardship, they created several amazing things, including the hammer Mjolnir. (laughs) To silence Loki, and because they'd won fair and square, the dwarves sewed his mouth closed as punishment. Of course, this didn't keep Loki out of trouble. As you'll see in other items on this list. Jesus. Poor fellow. All he did was cut someone's hair. (laughs) I've seen prank YouTube videos like that. I don't think a bunch of dwarves came by and sewed that guy's mouth shut. (laughs) Creating a rad hammer. That'd be a lot cooler, though. (laughs) Norse mythology is pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> I love how, like, it's kind of relatable, you know? It's like, I'm... S- Dude, don't cut off my bride's hair. They they sound like... Um, all the Norse gods sound like um, college students. I was about to say Chad's. <laughs> yeah. They're like, dude, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck, bro? You just cut my girl's hair off. They're all fraternity I'm guys. I'm fucking beat the shit out of you. He They're says. literally all like, fraternity guys. Yeah, he's like, no, bro, stop. I'll fix it. Instead of Greek letters that they, that fraternities use, they should start switching it up to Norse letters because be that good. is a lot more accurate. <laughs> as a former, as a former frat guy myself, I can vouch for this. Um, yeah, I want to move back over to Greek mythology. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a guess at this name, and I'm going to pronounce it like this no matter what. Uh, Circe turns Odysseus's crew into pigs, and then they don't want to go home. 
<laughs> what? Odysseus. Uh, you know the, the guy who. <laughs> no, I, I I heard. No, that you no, said. no, no, no. I'm I'm just kind of I'm kind of doing my own thing now. I don't care about what you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, uh, nice. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Odysseus, the guy who okay. went on such a long journey that it became named after him. <laughs> um, yeah. So Cersei was, in general, kind of a weird lady. She is I said, would say so. I'd say so. She is said to be the daughter of a titan, lived on an island called Col- Colchis, and could perform all manner of magic. When I mean, I, does that make her weird? Um, <laughs> born to the things that created the universe. No, I mean, living on an island called Colchis. <laughs> I think does that make you I, weird. Out of all of the three things that they listed, that is the least weird thing. Living yeah, on an island. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> living on an island is just, you know, doing your own thing. You're like, she's pretty weird. This bitch lives, lives on an island. This bitch lives on an island? Dude. Who does that? Cringe. <laughs> Cringe much? They're, all, they're um, all high school freshmen now. <laughs> yeah, what were you saying? Um, when Odysseus and his men came her way... She invited them to a feast, and the men happily attended. Without their buzzkill captain, Odysseus. Was he a buzzkill? Or was he just Apparently. trying to get home? Sounds like he didn't want him to get turned into pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he was kind of tired of this long voyage where he pissed off Poseidon, and now Poseidon wants to kill him. Let me guess how this feast ends. With a constitution saving throw. <laughs> yes, yes. Cersei, however, cast some magic on the food that turned his men into pigs. Odysseus got wind of this and, with, with a word of caution from Hermes, came to confront her about it. She confessed, said sorry, turned the men back, and then Odysseus just seemed to forget about it all. He and his men just stayed there for a whole year, partying rather than finishing their epic voyage and quest. In some tales, Odysseus shares Circe's bed. Ooh, even having children with her. Ooh. Ooh, Spicy. Considering Odysseus was married to a very loyal wife, this is the kind of cruddy move. This is kind of a cruddy move on this on his part. And if that is true, well, it's only some of the stories. Yeah, if that is, if those some stories are true, Odysseus, that is a very cruddy move on your part. Not Even good. though you probably didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody got turned into pigs. You don't know. It was different times back then. I guess you're right, Trace. <laughs> Tom's, can you prove that they didn't? <laughs> I guess you're right. No, I don't feel I wanted either. to say, the story was really chill about how Hermes, a, a literal god, just shows up to him and is like, maybe don't head in there. And he's like, whatever. Buddy, she's a witch. About- Buddy... She is a witch, and I mean that in a literal sense. Not that she's just not a nice lady. She is actually a witch. She's pretty weird. She, I mean, she's living on this island. She lives on this island alone. Doesn't that kind of help you know? Weird. They didn't know that she was a witch Red before. Flag. They didn't know she was a witch before, and Hermes goes, She lives on this island alone? Buddy, that oh, means geez. only one thing. She's a witch. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, Hermes, you know, the gods showing up in this story. It's not, I mean, the whole voyage is because Odysseus literally pissed off Poseidon. Can you read the header again? Circe turns Odysseus's crew into pigs. And then they don't want to go home. What that sounds like is she turns them into pigs and the pigs standing there looking at Odysseus go... No, it's good here. We're good. You can go on. <laughs> I like being a pig. This is, I'm fine with this. This, this is, is really me, okay. This is me now. <laughs> this I is am, my new me. I'm Pig Brian now. I'm no longer... <laughs> and I would like you to refer to me as such. <laughs> I am no longer Brian. I'm Pig Brian, and I like it here. Crosses his arms. Crosses his pig arms. Now, I'm looking at a... There's a picture of uh, a vase... I feel like when it's uh-huh. when it's ornate and old like this, you have to call it a vase. A vase. And it's one of those like uh, Greek ones where it's got the, a little story, and I would assume it's got Odysseus, and he's got a sword. <laughs> it looks like he's about to run Cersei through. 
but he did that later. He oh, Wink. when they shared the bed in yeah. some tales. What if that just meant that they just slept in the same bed? They split it fifty fifty. Each yeah. they they alternated nights. Yeah. One night he would sleep on the floor, and the next he got the bed. They shared it. It's like a timeshare. <laughs> or no, nah, he got he got his sword and he cut it in half, and he said, "I'm a loyal husband." That's what he's saying with that sword drawn in that pot. Yeah, if or you, vase, if you were to turn the vase to the other side, you would see him cutting a bed <laughs> in a speech bubble saying, I'm a loyal husband. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the vase. Um, so it's, it's Odysseus standing there with the sword. about to. It looks like he's about to run Cersei through. Mm-hmm. And then there is one of his crewmates... Who is only partially pig? It's more of a pig minotaur or a pinotaur, a pigotaur, as I'm, as I'm going to refer to him from now. He's got a man, the, a man bear pig. I wish he was part bear, part man, part pig. But it's you, just you see, you see Al Gore over there. <laughs> yeah, Al Gore's in the back. He's only half man, half pig. Not half man, not half bear, not half pig. Yeah. Um. But he's he is just he just has literally just has the head of a pig in the pigtail. And he's for some reason naked. So that's pleasant. <laughs> that's something to add. That's something to add. He is everyone else is clothed, but the pig man is na- pig Brian is naked. He says, I'm yeah. Pig Brian, I am free. He's like, Cool it, don't kill her. Bro, I don't wanna leave Chill. here. This is an all right setup. I'm really fine with pig head. Pig head time is the best time. Okay. <sighs> okay, my next one. Yeah. Ancient Egypt. Yep, yep, yep. The sweaty sun god Ra gave Egyptians perfume. Why is he sweaty? That's <laughs> well, not a necessary <laughs> detail. Because <laughs> he's living. The god in, of moisture is around now. No, he's living in the sun all the time, and he's like, "Who? We? This sun <laughs> yeah, is. This sun is hot. Sun over top of his head. <laughs> this is hot. He's like, whoa. It's like oh. holding a heat lamp right above your head. He's like, who? We? Why can I'm in the god of, of ice cube? <laughs> his shadow claps and says, "That's a good. That's a good one. Too. I want to fuck you." <laughs> Let's spit up more babies. <laughs> Let's make more babies. Oh my god. Ra, the Egyptian sun god, was born from <laughs> the sweaty Egyptian <laughs> A giant body of water. We know this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> At the beginning of the world. Ra first appeared as an egg floating on the water's surface, and then he created the heavens and earth. <laughs> egg. That's pretty good. Wait, where was the water? Uh, it was it was there. It was like, you know how in, you know how in video games there's the water underneath the terrain of the. Oh area. yeah, yeah. And if you like clip through the bottom, you'll it's just fall an like, endless ocean. You'll fall five hundred feet and then hit the water. Yeah, that's what it uh, was. In, in ancient Egypt, that happened. Just kidding. That's not what it says. <laughs> <laughs> in ancient Egypt, many thought perfumes were raw sweat. And Egyptians couldn't wait to douse themselves with the gods' perspiration. Sweet nectar. <laughs> yeah. The ancient Egyptians wore oil-based perfume, which often contained water lilies from the Nile. The Egyptians also had a separate guard for perfume, Nefertum. If they knew where the perfume came from, why did they think it belonged to Ra? Like, I would get it if rain fell from the sky and they're like, this rain smells pretty good. <laughs> but the fact that they were, like, harvesting water lilies and were, Maybe like... the water lilies were his sweat. He sweats flowers. That's pretty crazy. Well, I was thinking, I thought it would be funny. It <laughs> Get ready for joke time now. 
Uh, <laughs> here it comes. Everybody get your comedy pants on. Here comes a joke. <laughs> I thought it would be funny. I'm waiting. Here we are. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm attentive. Be, it's not even going to be that funny now. I'm, I'm thought, leaning in. <laughs> I'm in my fantasy castle or whatever you said. <laughs> your mind palace. <laughs> my mind palace. I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for the joke. Now, I was thinking, what if the perfume in ancient Egypt was really stinky and that's why they thought it was a sweat <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you everybody i'll be here all week don't forget to, to tip your uh, <laughs> tip your waiters <sighs> i don't have anything else to say that's the joke yeah how about you share one more okay, and then we'll okay. we'll wrap do up one more. we'll do one uh, we'll finish it off with Chinese mythology. Yeah. Um, this one has a cool name. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, the Unicorn's Prophecy. That sounds pretty good. You thought unicorns were only a European mythology. Uh-uh. So. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, the myth of the Unicorn's Prophecy sprang up around the life of Confucius. The story introduces the unicorn, the the chi the chi lin, uh, which is considered a sacred animal to the Chinese. The it, chitlin, the chi lin, a Chetlin pony, a Chetlin pony. Yeah, uh, it bears little resemblance to the year the unicorn of European myths. So it's not a horse with a horn. Uh, but it is a mixture of many creatures, including the deer, ox, dragon, and horse. That sounds terrifying. That sounds kick-ass. That's, Why is that a unicorn, though? Well, here's the thing what I'm imagining. So it's a, it's got, like, a horse kind of body. Okay. Two, like, you know how ox have, like, really big horns? Yeah. But instead of just horns, it's antlers. So you're getting the ox and the, and the deer right there. And it can also fly and breathe fire. That's exactly what I'm imagining. That's kick-ass. That sounds kick-ass. I kind of want to look this up just to see a picture. What's the name? You should type in the name, the the Shetland Pony. Chi Lin. C-H-I-L-I-N. Chi Lin Unicorn is what I'm looking up just to see if I can get a good uh, image. Chi Lin is a restaurant for anyone who's yeah, curious. Yeah, I, I, that's why I looked up Chi Lin Unicorn. It's There's one in so Florida. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. It's still pretty cool. I don't really know. I feel like they put too many animals for this description. It looks more like a horse dragon. Yeah, it's a horse dragon. Well, it's got antlers. Well, I'm seeing some with antlers, so I'm seeing the deer in those aspects. Not really getting the ox part. Also, this... Uh, maybe this is just my bias, but how is this a unicorn? Well, it's your bias. Like you said, it said it, 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 it specifically stated it's not like the Euro the unicorns in European mythology. Okay, what's uni mean? What's the, the, the prefix? One. One. What's, what's corn? Uh, <laughs> one corn. <laughs> one corn. That's where we get it from. Um, I don't know. Well, there's I just only... feel like it shouldn't be called a unicorn. Well... It's called the Chi Lin. Then why'd they call it a unicorn? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I barely knew how to pronounce it. Okay, maybe I'm being insensitive right now. No, I don't think you're being insensitive. You're asking the right question. <laughs> I, I, it should just. I think. I think unicorn. It may be like a improper translation because there are plenty of those that happen like it's improperly translated so it, it's it's a chi it's a chilin or a keelin or whatever it would be the chilin has been depicted in myths as a peaceful and timid animal who leaves the innocent alone but if if angered will jab evil people with its horn it is said that loyal soldiers with its horn with its horn Yes. So it does have one horn. But it's also got a cool dragon head. Yeah, okay, if it has one horn, I'm, I I see it. 
But me... all the... Okay, let's not think about this anymore. Please continue. We need to wrap this up. Yeah. Um, it is said that loyal soldiers, embro- soldiers embroidered the emblem of the Chilin on their clothing to show how dutiful they were. During the 14th century, a real giraffe was sent to the imperial court, and many observers claimed it was the reincarnation of the mythical Chilin. I'm glad it said... <laughs> Hold on! A real giraffe? I'm <laughs> glad it stated that one. it was a real... <laughs> It wasn't <laughs> Jeffrey the giraffe mascot costume. Oh, Jeffrey, no! <laughs> Jeff, no, he's not Jeffrey here. Dumb, dumb. He's not here. He's not here. Oh. He's he's currently in 14th century China. <laughs> he's in medieval China just standing around. <laughs> why Why did they have to specify that it was real? Like, why would I... <laughs> That's so good, though. No, I think I think because we're talking about mythology, they were like, "It's just a regular giraffe." It's a it's an actual giraffe it's that they just brought. a giraffe. Ah, uh, but yeah. Okay, is that it? That's it. That's mythology. Okay, that was a lot that? of fun. I think we will do another one of these. I really liked talking about mythology. That was a lot. Just of fun. to get a few and a few more cultures in too. That'd yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah. That was fun. Okay, let's go. What ahead. happened today? Yeah, Trace? let's go ahead and talk about what happened today in history. Today in history, of course, today is September the seventh, two days uh-huh. after my birthday. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's not my birthday. So if you're hearing this and you haven't wished him happy birthday, travel back in time two days ago and then shame uh, on you. Yeah, shame on you. Or just say happy belated birthday. I won't really care. Yeah, he won't. Um, September the seventh, nineteen thirty-six. Boulder Dam, yes. now called Hoover Dam, begins operation. Hoover Dam, big old dam. It's about it. That's all yeah, it is. Yeah, that's cool. Makes uh, me think of Fallout New Vegas. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the reason it was called Boulder Dam is not because it's located in Boulder, Colorado. Because when it was first constructed, it wasn't really constructed. It was just the biggest boulder they could find. And they just plopped it right down. They airlifted it in, plopped it right down, and that's what blocked the river. That's right. And then they carved the they carved away at it. They carved the well. Dam. Erosion happened in a year instead of over a lot of years. <laughs> I like how you're like, let's take the the semi plausible sounding thing from this lie. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> let's get rid of it. Let's say that let's say that erosion kicked up to like ten thousand percent and just eroded it all away and then stopped at the current shape. Well, then we put on uh, duct tape and it stopped the. <laughs> I just want to say to everyone that Sam, when he heard me say that, had a face of disappointment, like my dad would. <laughs> If I said something so stupid in front of him. <laughs> I don't know if that's entirely true. <laughs> what, your disappointment or my fact? <laughs> your fact. Oh, okay. Um, but what is true... Yeah. Is that they like to say it was made in 1936. Yeah. It's been there the whole time. It's natural, baby. It's they all natural, it. baby. <laughs> <laughs> they just found it like that. And they were like, oh, who, let's take credit. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where they said, maybe well, it's not right that it was discovered this year. Maybe yeah. we built it this year. Yeah, that's good. And I mean, it it came with all the hydroelectric plant stuff. Yeah, it had very powerful machinery. I mean, law of large numbers, that could just spontaneously appear somewhere. That's true. I'm a fond believer of that, that anything uh, anything is literally possible. It's just not probable. That's right. Um, another um, quick fact, real quick, is that Herbert yeah. Hoover uh, was born from the dam. Yes. That's, why they, they, that's <laughs> why they called it Hoover Dam. That's why it's not Boulder <laughs> Dam anymore. It's because Herbert Hoover popped out of it one day. I don't know if that's entirely true, but here's another quick fact. They built the whole thing with Hoover vacuums. 
They they used a cloning machine to clone Herbert Hoover, and they laid him like bricks a thousand times and created Hoover Dam. Okay, that's a lot of lies. <laughs> we really hit a stride once we figured out that we could make fun of Herbert Hoover. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's let's move over to Sam's that's holiday, the holiday corner. corner and wrap this baby up. Uh, it's September seventh, like Trace said. As I said. Um, and today is national. Well, it doesn't say national, so I shouldn't add that. It's regional. <laughs> it's, it's, it's regional mouth guard day. <laughs> I wonder which region. <laughs> Whichever one you're reading this in. Yeah, so it's international, possibly. Now, I love these weird holidays. Yeah. There's nothing explaining why it's mouth guard day. It just is, and all it says on this website is, Mouth Guard Day is observed next on Monday, September 7th, 2020. It has been observed the first Monday in September since 2018. Okay. What happened in 2018 where someone was like, Mouth Guard Day? That's what I was about to say. I was going to say, let's take like a, a quick guess or two to see like why today is now Mouth Guard Day. And I was going to say... It's because the mouth guard might have been invented today. But I don't think the mouth guard has only been around for two years. Um, because I know that it hasn't. I, I don't think it yeah, has. Yeah, no. Um, because I know that it hasn't. Because I used okay. to play football. Um, so I guess now it's just because. Oh, I think it's a company did it. They what companies get to claim this shit now? You can make a holiday. I can just make up a holiday. Oh my god! Screw it. Today's, it's not Mouth Guard Day. What is it? Today's not Mouth Guard Day. Today is um, Herbert Hoover Vacuum Day. Yeah, today's uh, Hoover Dam Day. <laughs> Boom! Congratulations, Herbert. <laughs> we immortalized you. You haven't been immortalized before. We did it now. Yeah, that's right. No one remembered your name. Everyone forgets what that dam's called. <laughs> Not anymore. Not because of the boys. From, now because of the boys from from our perspective, you will be remembered forever as the guy that's who right. was birthed from a dam. <laughs> and not our 35th president. Alrighty. Yeah, we're done. That's it. Okay, bye. <laughs> no. No! <laughs> 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 this has been from our perspective thank you all for listening of course if you have any friends that you think would like to listen to the podcast send them our way we'd love to have new listeners also give us a rating you know good bad or otherwise we'd love to hear from you uh l- let us know if we could change anything we we'll we'll, we'll do anything we're desperate please uh <laughs> don't take the kids um <laughs> You can find us pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. Uh, just look up from our perspective. If we're not on a specific place, let us know. Uh, and if you want to ever hear more from us, because you just haven't gotten tired of us yet, you can find us on social medias at FOP underscore pod on Instagram and Twitter. And you could also find us on Facebook at From Our Perspective. We have another podcast. If you'd like to listen to it, it's called The Elevator Pitch. It's where me and Sam create two movies and put them head to head against each other. Uh, each week, and at the end of or at the beginning of next week, we let you all decide on Instagram. So go check it out. That, again, that's the elevator pitch. Other than that, we post this podcast. This <laughs> <laughs> what a great ending! I'm not going to edit that out. I typically edit out my blunders. I'm not going to edit that out. Okay. We post this podcast every Monday. And we will see you next Monday. I've been Trace. And I've been Sam. Goodbye. Toodaloo.